Hiya then folks, I'm Robert Llewellyn. And I'm Cathy Rogers. Welcome to Scrap Eat Challenge. Well it might as well be Scrap Eat Challenge. Look what we've got round us. There's all manner of stuff, gubbins, bits of metal and all sorts of things. <laughs> it's not really like building a boat this is it? No. No. You wouldn't believe that this is to actually build a fire surround would you? But this episode I think is going to be as close as we've ever come to Scrap Eat Challenge. Because yeah. this lot really is gonna be it's our fire place. surround it is yeah and it's either gonna look absolutely awesome or, or it's gonna look like scrapping yeah challenge. it's gonna look like somebody's just <laughs> thrown a load of tat at us about but you've been at work all day haven't you yeah and i've been here doing some work i've been stripping out all the log burner so if we have a quick look at that first see how that went and then you can come back to us then yeah First job then, we need to clear the bits from around it and I think in that box down the back there there's all the bits I'm going to need, all the sealants and stuff and ropes and things. I'm hoping it is anyway because I seem to recall that's where I left it. And yes, that looks promising. Just in there we've got some of the sealants and the ropes and the paste and stuff so we'll pop that to one side because we don't need that quite just yet. This is the new top that we had cut that we're going to fit onto here as we rebuild it. That just gives a little bit extra space to fit a pan or a kettle on there without it toppling over. Apart from taking the screws out that are holding it to the half, the only other bit I need to disconnect really is this flue. But first off I'll nip outside and take the chimney off so we're not going to disturb that while we're messing here. Right, I've got a feeling this is either going to go really easy or I'm going to be here ages because obviously we seal all this joint and we now need to break that seal. What I'm attempting to do now is undo the lugs that hold this collar in and just take the whole lot out so we can separate it out because I think there's so much fire cement holding it all together in there it's just not free enough. I need to take this collar off that sits on the outside anyway because we want to reseal that and I'm thinking now I've managed to move one of the lugs in there but the other one I just can't quite get to but I'm thinking if I can move this or take this off it might give enough movement down there to just sort of slide it out off that lug. And like I said, this has got to come off anyway, so we'll give that a try. Well that's great off the fire. It's not dealt with the issue of it still being attached to that collar. Well at least it's one stage further. And we've also got the roof collar off. Let's get the screwdriver out, release the screws and we can move the actual fire out of the way. Not to mention retrieving my phone from in the fire that I was using as a torch. Well now that's got it moved off its mount just need to clear all this out, move this paving slab out, give it all a good clear up round here. So I think next job is get this roof collar refitted. When I fitted this collar originally, I think I used the wrong stuff really. I used like the fire cement and as you can see it's, it's obviously not 
sort of properly adhered to the, the surroundings and I must say it never actually leaked and in the time it's been fitted we have had a fair amount of rain but it never did leak but it's clearly not the right stuff so I'll clean all this off and we'll refit it using some heat resistant silicon and that should form a good tight bond on there and definitely make sure there's no leaks in future. So there's really sort of three sections we need to make sure we get plenty of sealant and a good bond. That's obviously around each one of the nuts and bolts and all the way around that edge there. As long as we've got those sealed we know we're not going to have any leaks in future. I am also going to put a bead around there. That's really an insurance because obviously if water's got past this one we've probably got problems anyway. But just to be sure, let's get a bead round there and seal it fully. This is not a time to be the tight Yorkshireman and scrimp and save. We need to make sure it's sealed properly. Now I'm going to run an extra bead, I just moved the wife ring out of the way, all the way around the edge and then as we tighten it up it will squeeze that into place as well. Tighten them nuts up. That's those tightened up inside. So I'm just going to clear all the debris from around the edge and then put another good squirt of silicon around there and smooth it all in. So this is where I want to err on the side of caution because at the end of the day we've spent a lot of time, money and effort building this boat the last thing we want is any water damage from scrimping on a bit of sealant. So with the final bead of silicon round there I can now just smooth it off with a cloth and we'll let that dry. tidied up in here then and I've given the floor a coat of paint as well get that protected because obviously once we get this half down fingers crossed it's going to be a fair few years before we'd ever have to touch that again so we'll have it nice and protected and that's all sorted. The other job I need to do this afternoon is get that collar off that pipe clean all that up ready for when we come to refit it then I need to go and get a few bits and bobs and I can join you back with Dawn. See, I have been doing stuff while you've been at work. You have, you've made progress. Yes, I've not just been sitting about drinking tea and eating bacon sandwiches all day. Not all day, anyway. Yeah. I even got this uh, this collar off and it was just a case of working out which hammer I needed. All right. I, okay. I only got to this hammer. I didn't need the really oh. big hammer. It was just that hammer. But yeah, that's come off all right. So I think with all the bits and bobs that we've got lying around more or less ready to get cracking and actually start the rebuild just need to when I drop you at work in the morning I'll have to call into the uh, call into the shop don't get excited it's not one of them shops it's nothing good it's nothing for you ladies no. it's man stuff tools and things <laughs> tools we like tools <laughs> yeah so I'll call into the shop in the morning grab the last few bits that I need and then I can get cracking and we'll uh, We'll get a fireplace built again. We certainly will. I think now though. I can smell our tea. I can smell our tea as well. It's smelling lovely. So let's go and eat our tea. Have a good night's sleep. Yeah. Get up all refreshed. And we'll get cracking tomorrow. Certainly will. Morning then folks. I've took on to work. I've been to the shop. Got the bits that we need. So we're ready to get cracking for the day. First off what I've done is I've connected something up in here. This is my electrolysis bucket. This is where magic happens and we get rid of rust. We'll come back to that later. What we're going to start with today is making the hearth. And basically the hearth is going to be made up in two sections in effect. We're going to have a wooden surround and then a metal tray on top in effect. Obviously the metal tray is kind of the business end of it if you like. That's what catches any of the ash or anything. And is ultimately there to do the job of stopping the boat setting on fire. The wooden surround 
is the decorative bit if you like that bit we're going to make out of these old school desks if you remember we've made the kitchen worktops out of them and we made the toilet and the shower tray out of them first thing i need to do then is get these ripped down to the right length using the table so so i'll measure up and cut them to the right length then we can have a look at joining them together to basically make what's going to be a box so i've got my three pieces cut that i need for now that's two sides and one at the front I don't need one at the back, you'll see as I build the frame up why. The pilot holes I'm drilling for the screws, I'm also using the countersink bit that then allows me to cut some plugs out of some scrap timber that go over the top of the screws and hide the screw heads. This piece is going to be the left hand side. So although that's the outside of the box, what you're actually going to see is this bit. So I've cut it deliberately so that the back, the not so nice side if you like, is going to be facing away from you and the bit that you're going to see is this nice bit whilst making up the box and the framework for the fire to sit on you will see on the footage i do skip forward quite a bit to be honest there's only so much interest i can make out of making a wooden box i really don't think you need to see every minor detail i've got that internal frame done then that's what's obviously going to take the weight of the log burner it needed to be nice and strong and solid now i want to make that top bit look nice so I'm going to use some of these boards that again were part of old school desks chop them to length and fit them in there well now it's dropped roughly in place I'm hoping you'll agree this is starting to look pretty good the thing I do need to do now is notch out along the back so that it can fit nicely into those corners so it's just going to be a case of taking a corner out of that one there and then trimming all these boards back and again taking the corner out of that one there so it snugs nicely up to that back wall 10 minutes with the saw and we've got them sat just how they need to be so i think that concludes the woodwork for today it's time to move on to metal work but first off i guess that means i should tidy all this lot up and probably have a brew at the same time obviously well as you can see i've only just started tidying up but i'm breaking off from that got something far more important to do as you're probably aware, Summer, Dawn's daughter, has been in hospital with COVID, pneumonia and blood clots. Fingers crossed she's now on the mend and on the mend well enough that the doctors have said she can actually go home. So I'm leaving this and I'm shooting off to pick Summer up from the hospital. This can wait till later. Mission accomplished. Summer's now dropped back off at home where the rest of her recovery can begin because she's not 100% better, but at least she's well enough to be home. And that's great news, so fingers crossed not be too long till she's fully fit again one advantage to popping out there was our new water boiler and the flue kit had been dropped off to Dawn's mum Pam who lives just around the corner from summer so while I was out I called in and picked that up so we've now got the water boiler and everything needed to fit it we just need funnily enough summer's boyfriend Ben to come and fit it now for us hopefully we'll get that done over the next few days other than that I suppose I'd now better carry on tidying up then look at getting this steel out that we need to fit in between times though and i definitely need a broom and it's not actually that long till i'm going to be going back out to pick dawn up from work so maybe she can help me with this steel let's see how it goes no rest for the wicked as they say as it turned out i had time to quickly cut one piece of steel and fasten that to the wall before i picked dawn up I've just picked Dawn up from work then and then I've raced back to the boat as she was locking the gates so I can get a reaction to the work that I've been doing today on this fireplace. See what she thinks. Oh my God. No, I'm genuinely, oh my God. That's fantastic, I love it. Seems like a thumbs up. So I think what we need to do then is we need to make a quick brew and then we can uh, have a little uh, discussion about it, that's, shall we? That's amazing. I think it's fantastic. Get kettle on then. I think you deserve a brew for that. Brew? Maybe I deserve a beer. No, just a brew. Uh, all right, I'll not get carried away. Let's make a brew up and then we'll have a, have a little uh, look at that and see what we think. That's very good. Ta da that's what I've uh, got done this afternoon. And you're happy with it, aren't yeah. you? 
I mean, basically, you knew kind of what we were working with and what have you, but it's still difficult to put these things actually yeah. together. But yeah, obviously what we're using is some reclaimed steel that, to be honest, we've had in our garden at home for, I'm reckoning it's probably four years <laughs> we've had these sheets of steel in our back garden. And it's galvanised steel, so it's kind of just started to go rusty in odd spots. And I like it. Yeah, and we've kind of said we might look at sort of either sanding a bit of the rust off or tweaking it a bit, but we definitely want to keep the rustic feel to it, don't we? Yeah. You know, whatever we I mean, do the with it. The character's just fantastic. Yeah, it's partly the character. Um, oh, by the way, we've got us drinks and you've even got changed after work as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feeling all relaxed Get now. Get that jumper off. And it's been a bit of a chaotic day, as I'm sure it's come across on the video, but summer's home. God, one happy mama. Yeah, summer's home, I dropped her off earlier, didn't I? You did. So you she's did. still not 100% obviously, but no. they have sort of sent her home from hospital and at yeah. least that's a... That's a positive sign, yeah. isn't it? She and I think we must say this point... oral medication now, isn't she? Yeah, which yeah. she can do it all, which yeah. is amazing. It's, uh, we must say, the, the support we've had has been overwhelming, hasn't it? Oh. We've, had, we've had more comments over the last couple of videos about how summer is and obviously wishing everyone well. Yeah. Can't thank than, you enough. ...than we've had about the actual product, uh, project itself. So, yeah, thanks very much for that. Yeah, superb. Thank you. But let's get back to the project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Job um, in hand. Basically, this is not finished, obviously, I mean, for one, unless we had a Bluetooth flu. Bluetooth flu, it just whizzes the <laughs> smoke. Where cool. it should go, but no. Oh, in fact, I've just had another idea. I've got a little project on the go out there that's to do with flu, so you grab camera All and, right. come and come and film me. Okay, no problem. Come on. Let's have a look what it was then I'd put into soak. Let me just disconnect that first before we end up shorting things out. It's the collar. And we'll see whether this has worked. Because basically these nuts and bolts had rusted up, which is why we were struggling to get it undone in the first place. So I've used the electrolysis and let's have a look. See whether it's done any different. Hmm. Seemingly not a lot. The power of electrolysis only really works on the thing that you've actually got the terminals on. And the terminal was a kind of on there rather than on the nut itself. The bolt, sorry. So it might not have done much. So, never defeated. Let's put the clamp onto the nut, bolt, and put it back in and we'll leave it another day. It will work eventually, I'm sure. Oh, right, so that's not really worked yet, but I'm confident it might work. <laughs> it works really well for cleaning pans and things, so we'll see anyway. But yeah, so back to the project. Like we said, this is not finished by any means. We have got to, on the bottom here, put what I was planning on making, more or less a metal tray with a lip that obviously acts as a, as a half. But I've been seeing just how good all this wood is. I'm, I'm not wanting to cover it up with no. a, a metal sheet. No, it's lovely. So we're kind of now thinking, is there some way we could maybe raise this up on some kind of metal stand or something so that we can still see some of this wood? And We are actually going next week to a, an axe making course, aren't we? Yeah. You've treated me for my birthday. We're going to make an axe each. Yeah. It'll not be a competition, honest. But my axe will my, be better than no, yours. No, my axe will be better than yours. No, mine will be better than yours. <laughs> Whose axe will be better? Mm. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, so where, where we're actually going for this axe making thing is a proper forge, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm wondering if we take some pictures of this and any ideas anybody can come up with. Oh, yeah. Like I say, what we're wanting to do is kind of still be able to see the wood, but we do have to have kind of some kind of metal tray in front with a lip to catch any yeah, any course. bits that open as we come safe, out. Aren't it? So, and obviously we don't want to have the fire like raised up massively because obviously heat rises and therefore if the fire's up here, then down here is going to be cold. So, yeah. but I'm just thinking maybe something lifting it maybe four inches or so, which is like ten centimeters off there on some kind of legs or framework it's a bit 
I don't know. Like we say, any suggestions, ideas, pictures, anything like that, yeah. please, uh, please drop it. In it. Yeah, it just it, it just looks so good. And really, this is kind of all the look that we've been aiming for all along, isn't it? The rustic look. Like we say, we might tweak <coughs> that a bit, and it needs a bit of trim on it. We've got the plate in place that's extending your cooking area. Oh yeah. Yeah. I do seem to think though I must have given the man the wrong dimensions. I think I've given him the dimensions for the actual chimney mm. rather than going around the collar. Yeah. So I might have to tweak that. There's always Only a you. there's always a tweak <laughs> in there too. But yeah, I think overall that's kind of showing what we're aiming for. So still bits to do, still tweaks to go. But I don't think now, I was actually planning on finishing it off tomorrow, but I think I'm more or less going to leave it now. We'll wait and see what feedback we get from these videos, and then see if we can see sort anything the at the, at the forge, mm. um, and take it from there. Absolutely, yeah. But, there can't be many narrowboats that have got deliberate rust. As a feature wall? Just in general, because oh, rust and narrowboats are the two things that are like, ah! And we're deliberately putting rust on our I think it's amazing. Yeah. I really, really do. I think it's awesome. So yeah, it's uh, it's certainly coming together. So hopefully, this video even being a bit chaotic <laughs> and kind of chasing That's about here and there. Total, though, isn't it? it certainly is. And it's definitely one of these fly on the wall videos where you're seeing everything lock, stock and barrel. Yeah. But yeah, obviously hopefully everyone's liked the video. Yeah. Do you think everyone's already subscribed to the channel? I hope so. Subscribing is absolutely free. There's no cost or anything involved whatsoever. It just means you're kind of following our channel. Yeah. And what else do they need to do when they subscribe? Ding the bell. There's a little bell icon next to the subscribe button on YouTube. Ding the little bell. That gives you notifications each time we put a video on. And as we always say, we only put videos on when we've done something. So if you get a notification that we put a video on, that means we've done some more work. It does. And it this does. project is edging ever closer to being finished. It is, it is. Ever closer. So yeah, I'm going to just sit here all night and give my work a good coat of looking at because I think that is looking absolutely I do. fantastic. I love it. Love it. But so we'll see guys. you all later folks. Bye bye. <laughs>